Many things are still a baffling mystery in our world. Science doesn't quite yet have all the answers or all the keys to unlock the secrets of our universe. Every day somewhere, someone sees something they can't explain. Something that we're told is not there, is not real, or simply doesn't exist. Too many reliable people tell of sightings and encounters with the unknown. The myths, legends, folklore, and old wives' tales are usually based in fact and in reality. When a witness to such a strange encounter finds no one believes them and faces ridicule from people they trust and love, they turn to us, the Alabama Bigfoot Society. Well, hello once again. It's another hot day down here in Alabama. As you can see, I've got my uh, kind of safari hat on. I bought this for a cowboy hat. It uh, was a uh, reminded me of a hat that I had seen in a, a Gunsmoke episode. Of uh, if you remember back in the 70s, whenever Gunsmoke was big, there was also an actor that uh, played on there uh, on uh, a few episodes who also had his own TV show called Lancer. His name was James Stacy. He was a very good actor, very young man back then, very good actor. I, I, I liked a lot of his uh, westerns and that type of stuff. And on one particular Gunsmoke episode, he had a hat similar to this, and uh, I just liked that hat, and I saw it in the western store a while back, and I said, well, I think I'll just buy that hat and wear it a while. And it's a pretty good wearing hat. But actually, after I bought this hat and uh, put it in the other video, it's uh, on the uh, opening uh, picture, whatever you call it, on our videos, Whenever I got to looking at it, I really didn't notice how much that I had begun to favor my father when he was about my age. He always wore a uh, hat similar to uh, Indiana Jones. And that's kind of what this one reminded me of whenever I saw that picture of me on there. I do want to do a couple of videos about my dad later on. He uh, uh, had Indian ancestry as well, and uh, he, uh, matter of fact, he had some stories that I, I need to pass along to you about uh, some Indians one time. and. Uh, some other things. He uh, actually was on the construction crew that built Talladega Raceway. He uh, was one of those guys that hung off the cables on uh, tractors up there and uh, built the raceway. I'll uh, do a video on that a little bit later on. But what I want to tell you today is where we're at to begin with. As you can see in the background, we're at a cemetery. But anyway, I have a lot to tell you on this Alabama adventure. So let's get started on it. As I always do, from the tail end of the Appalachian mountain chain, in the heart of the South, this is Alabama Adventures. Okay, now I just want to give you a shot of the front of the church there. It's a very nice church, so I've been told. I've actually never been in this church, but uh, anyway, a lot of people I know go up here and uh, claim it's a, uh, a real good church to be part of. It uh, is right off, let me get that car right there. It's right off Highway 77. I'm not sure of this particular road number, but I thought I'd let you get a shot of the church in case you're coming down Highway 77. Uh, you might want to uh, swing by here. It's a... Uh, Kind of a little something uncommon, and uh, I got a little something I want to tell you about this grave whenever we get up there. Then, as soon as I do this, because I told you I would uh, show you that dog grave in one of the videos later on, we're going to head off down to uh, Daviston, Alabama. There is a uh, psychic dog down there that I got a little, kind of a little funny story that I want to tell you about. Always when uh, you come around cemeteries, regardless whether the wind's blowing or not, you need to keep an eye out. You never know, you might see some child sitting in that swing swinging maybe the camera will pick them up if they if there is somebody there and if they are we just come to visit you a little bit we didn't come to bother you this afternoon okay now so here we go back up to the uh dog grave i want to tell you about i get out there and uh tell you when uh, the little dog was born and when it died it's just a regular monument like anybody else would had at uh this particular lady thought so much of that dog uh that she wanted to have it buried close to her, just like I would like to have Chico buried close to me, but that probably won't happen. But anyway, 
Yeah, something that I do want you to notice real, real quick. Of course, you'll see my little car in the background, as you always do. But here is the actual uh, cemetery, Mount Olive Cemetery. And the lady had already purchased this particular plot because her son had passed away, and he was already buried in it. He died of a uh, massive heart attack cutting grass one day. But anyway, very, very young man. But right over here behind it is a little dog grave out of the graveyard but uh anyway let's get on over here to where i can show you a little bit about it and i'll see if i can read it this is uh little jenny jenny was the dog's name and let me get, get this leaf off so we can sort of see her memory remains with the love she left in our hearts and she was born 1993 and died in 2007 couple little paw prints up there that of course those are not her paw prints but those are a little bit big her Jenny was a uh, toy poodle but what I want you to notice is just how close uh, that this little dog's grave is to the lady that wanted it buried next to her and uh, as I told you there was one person that went to Raisin Cane about you couldn't bury a dog in a cemetery you could bury it in the woods next to the cemetery but uh, you couldn't actually bury a dog in the cemetery because God did not create dogs, I guess, in his opinion. God, uh, I guess he figures, barely got by creating humans. And uh, he didn't create anything else, and that's what cemeteries are pretty much for, uh, religious, you know, a way to bury and uh, pass on into the other world. But uh, I guess the dogs buried, what, maybe 15 feet from where she wanted it. What's the difference? I, as I said in another video, and I'll say in this one, and then we'll get on to the main video today. I know a lot of dogs I had rather be buried by than a lot of humans that I know. But anyway, this particular lady here, I'm not taking up for her or anything like that. She was uh, not one of my favorite people in the world. I won't, we won't go into all that, but uh, anyway, uh, I feel like since she had purchased this, and it was away from the main cemetery anyway whenever she bought the uh, plot and somebody else has bought another one now down below it i guess the uh, cemetery will expand on across the road and around the road and probably they'll have to cut the woods one of these days to uh, expand the cemetery as the people pass on but it's just my opinion what was the difference in burying the dog 15 feet away from her but anyway that's just the way it is sometimes so now let me uh get through with my opinions and uh my beliefs and that type of stuff. And we'll go tell you about a psychic dog that I, a story I ran up. This is the week of July the 4th, 2017. And uh, let me get back over here where you can see Jenny's grave one more time because uh, I knew uh, Jenny. You used to see her out in the yard uh, running sometimes. But now this particular lady here would carry this dog in the church. She would put her in the shopping cart in the uh, uh, grocery store. She was kind of like Chico. Now, I don't carry Chico to church, and I don't carry him to the grocery store, but he does go with me a lot, and uh, this particular lady here thought of this little dog as uh, one of her children. But anyway, uh, that's just the way things are sometimes. So let's go on to Davidson, Alabama now, and if it ain't too hot out there, I'll sit down. I think they've got a bench out there in town somewhere that you can actually uh, sit on. It is hot today. I asked uh, somebody a while ago how hot was it, he said it was about 900 out here today, and the uh, cemetery is one of the hottest places in the world. And it ain't far from it. That's why I got on this old uh, camouflage ragged T-shirt is to try to let a little air through. And uh, that was another thing that I thought of when I was coming up here. I know my mother, if she was still alive, would raise cane about some of the shirts that I wear in some of these videos. But I just like old, uh, roomy, ragged shirts sometimes. They just feel good, and they wear good. Uh, if uh, your mother was like mine, she always uh, told you every morning, always put on clean underwear in case something happened. Now, I've got on clean underwear, and it's not this ragged. But, uh, well, it's, it's really not ragged. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you about some underwear right quick. Had somebody the other day, a, a few weeks ago, sent me a pair of underwear, I guess. You could also use it as a bathing suit or underwear, just whatever you want to use it as. And they had uh, embroidered across the butt Alabama Bigfoot Society. So if I can get out around somebody's pool and get a little sun a little bit later on, I guess I can wear that. And uh, if you've got a pool 
that's there's what we need to be doing on a day like this is either in Florida on the beach or laying around your pool sipping on some coke and rum I'll bring the coke and rum if you'll furnish the pool now as you notice I put on my other hat this is a hat I wear whenever I'm driving because the wind will blow my cowboy hat off sometime but anyway I found something else here in the church that I wasn't aware of that I want to show you real quick they actually have an outside uh, altar or a pulpit whatever you want to call it and there is uh, the cross I guess they use this a lot at uh, Easter and that type of stuff and uh, or whenever they get ready to uh, have a sermon they just get out in nature which is a uh, pretty good thing but I'll walk around and let you see that there's an old flower that needs uh, throwing away but uh, I had never actually seen anything like this in the cemetery did not know this was here but anyway I'll uh, walk right back down here and we'll get a little bit better shot of it okay now maybe you can see a little bit more of it I'm not sure what I was picking up in the viewfinder because the sun is so bright and I've got on sunglasses and I just can't see the viewfinder anyway today but I uh, have some other things that I uh, need to talk to you about and tell you about in a little bit but maybe you can uh, kind of see the uh, altar or pulpit whatever you want to call it the outdoor at Mount Olive you might want to come by and uh, see this sometime as I said if you're down our way this is in southern Clay County Alabama Okay, now I pulled right on down here on the side of the road and everybody's got to come by and see what I'm doing out here and try to get it to where you can't hear the video, but that's just uh, what I have to put up with. Anyway, here's a sign. Uh, you might see uh, Mount Olive Road. That's where the church is. There's a very large uh, power line that goes across through here. And the reason I'm showing you this, I want you to look at this sky, uh, those uh, clouds. And this is a place so you will know where it is because I hadn't had any Bigfoot sightings or Black Panthers or that type of stuff lately. I call this place uh, Big Sky. And if I ever mention it on a video, then you'll kind of have an idea of where it is. But if you see that white building down there and that other building out behind it, that large barn, all of that's for sale. So if you think you might want to come down to this part of Clay County and uh, start a life, start a business, that used to be a, uh, a Western store down there. Uh, used to be at one time was a gas station and a, a garage where they worked on 18-wheeler uh, rigs and that type of stuff. Uh, this is all for sale right down there now, and I know the man very well that owns it. And if you'd be interested in that, just give me a holler, and uh, Mike could uh, fix you up with moving down to Clay County, Alabama. Uh, Clay County is one of the nicest counties in the state. There are several, and then there's some that uh, you want to keep out of. Uh, a lot of them now is being uh, a lot of play. I, I won't say this. I did not say this, but there are places here in Alabama now that are being used for uh, uh, witness protection people. And uh, you certainly don't want to live in a place like that unless you're associated with that. But uh, anyway, just what I thought I'd give you a, a view of this uh, very pretty place, very nice place that, that I call a, a Big Sky. Now, as I was coming up the road, and uh, I know you uh, looking at this little hat. I keep changing hats, but uh, like I said, this is one I wear whenever I'm driving to keep it from uh, blowing off. Anyway, I've been noticing that uh, over the last week that uh, people around here have cut a lot of hay. And they don't cut it into small bales and uh, bale it like they used to back whenever I used to have to help in some of these hay fields. And uh, picking up, uh, I don't know how much those bales of hay weighed. Some of them felt like it weighed over 100 pounds. It was all you could do to throw them on the truck. Now they do the big round bales and that type of stuff. And I just want you to look at some uh, hay real quick out here. Just something uh, out there in the field. Uh, I got my blinker on so everybody won't hit me coming up through here. It's just something that uh, you don't see very much anymore. Uh, farming is becoming a thing of the past too as everything else is. But uh, I saw that and I saw that big old tree. That would make a uh, great looking painting right out there if uh, you just had time to do it. There were several other pastures down through here that I noticed some uh, hay, but uh, whenever I'm out riding around, I, I just like to look at things like that. That's why I don't drive over 100 miles an hour, so I can look at things. And uh, you might come out a whole lot better and enjoy life a whole lot better if you just took time to look at it rather than uh, playing uh, NASCAR race out on the uh, road all the time. Okay, so now here we are. I have uh, stopped at a little place over here to where I'm going to try to finish this uh, video up for us. You might want to keep an eye in the background there. I have had some uh, wood knocks reported in this area lately, so you never know when something may go roaming around behind the camera or whatever. 
something else I need to tell you real quick before uh, we get this video going. And I know this is seemed like a uh, long intro or whatever, but on uh, October the 28th in Valley, Alabama, at the community center, the gentleman that has the uh, paranormal talk show on Saturday afternoon is having a paranormal mini conference, and I'll be a part of it. And if you would like to come down and uh, listen to what all we're going to talk about the paranormal, just all subjects of the paranormal, you would be very welcome to come. And if you have something you would like to add, a story or whatever, we would be glad to hear it as well. But now let me get on to the story about Psychic Dog. This is a one particular uh, Psychic Dog that uh, actually tries to talk and knows what you're saying. And uh, I got this story one day this week, uh, with July the 4th of uh, 2017. There were some people that lived in uh, the community that uh, moved out of the house uh, where they were living, uh, probably quit paying rent and got thrown out, probably is what it sounds like to me. But anyway, the uh, mail carrier noticed that they had had a dog whenever they had been going by delivering the mail and everything. And after these people moved out, that was what they noticed, that they had unchained the dog and it was just running loose in the yard out there. So uh, anyway, after about the third day, he carried it some water, uh, some food and that type of stuff and uh, told somebody else about the dog over there. It was a real friendly dog, real nice dog. They might want it, but uh, he, he was going to try to catch it and carry it home with him. The dog would come up to you, a very friendly dog, after he got to feeding it. And most animals like that usually are. Whenever you go to feeding them, then you've got a friend for life. But anyway, what happened, uh, it was a, a female dog, and the people that decided that they wanted the dog went over there and got it. And uh, they were going to have it, carry it, and have it, spayed or stop it from having puppies in any way or whatever. But they didn't quite get it done. The dog uh, came in heat, you call it, and uh, the uh, dog uh, wound up having some puppies. And where it had puppies was up under these people's house, the one that had went and rescued the dog. Uh, they heard the dogs whining and uh, that type of stuff one morning, so they knew they'd been born. So the lady that uh, lived there was going to crawl up under the house to see how many there were and all this type of stuff. So that's what she tried to do, but this mother dog was uh, very protective, and uh, she acted like she would bite her. She went to growling at her. She got between her and the puppies, as a mama dog will do, and wouldn't let her on up under the house to get the puppies out. But anyway, while she was under there, she noticed that there was this one puppy that had been pushed over to the side, as they do sometimes, Whenever they have a litter of puppies, usually one, at least one dies in the litter. And the uh, mother dog had kind of pushed it to the side. So anyway, that's what she wanted to do was to get the uh, puppy out from under the house, especially in this 100-degree uh, weather before it went to uh, smelling or anything so they could bury it. Anyway, that's what she told her husband that afternoon after she got out from under the house. She told him the, the next day that he needed to get up under there with a, a rake or something and try to get this little puppy out so they could bury it before it went to uh, smelling and this type of stuff. So here's where the psychic of the dog comes in. He uh, knew he was, he was going to have to do this, so he went down to the barn that morning, and, of course, the dog was out in the yard, the mother dog. Uh, her name's uh, Reba, so let me uh, just uh, refer to Reba uh, uh, rather than the mama dog. But anyway, he went down to the barn and got a shovel and a rake and everything. He was going to bury the puppy when he got it out from under there. But this dog was very friendly. It was jumping up on him, you know, kind of running around in the yard, that type of stuff. I guess she was proud of her puppies and that type of stuff. He just uh, sort of knelt down, and she jumped up on the side of him and was looking at him right in the eye, as uh, she did whenever they talked to her and this type of stuff. And he told her, he said, now you've got a puppy under that house that's dead. And he said, I'm going to have to come up under there and get that puppy out so that it has got to be buried. But he said, what I would like for you to do, rather than me having to crawl under the house and rake it out with a rake, is why don't you just go up under there and bring me that puppy, and I'll, and I'll bury it. So anyway, he, uh, as I said, he went on back in the barn, got his shovel and rake, and uh, he was going to go out there and uh, dig a hole to begin with and everything to put it in. As he came out of the barn... He looks around, and Reba is out from under the house, and she's got this puppy in her mouth. She has uh, gone up under there and done exactly what he said. She has brought the puppy out, and uh, she comes up to him, and he reaches down to take the puppy, and she won't let him have it. She makes a circle or two around the yard and everything, and now they have got another dog that died uh, a year or so ago, and it's buried kind of down at the back of the yard, 
and they have the grave marked with the dog and everything. But anyway, he starts over there going to dig a grave for this puppy. Well, Reba has her puppy in her mouth, and she goes over to this other dog's grave and smells of it with the puppy in her mouth and lays the puppy down by the grave. Okay, now the man, I should have thought of a name for him right quick, but uh, anyway, the man that was going to bury the dog, uh, the owner of Reba, goes on back over there next to this other dog's grave and digs a grave for the puppy. All right. Just about time he gets through, he's going to, of course, wrap the dog in some kind of something, some newspaper or an old cloth or maybe a cardboard box or something to bury it in. Well, while he's getting something to wrap the puppy in to bury it, Reba comes over and sticks her nose down in the grave and she smells and she smells and all this type of stuff, checking out the grave. All right, he buries the dog and covers the dog up. Reba, who's running around in the yard watching him from time to time, she'll make a little short run and then she'll watch him burying the dog. After he gets the grave completed and covered up, she comes back over and lays down between the other dog and her puppy for a while. All right, that afternoon, the lady that owned uh, Reba came in and, uh, of course, Reba comes up to the car and uh, won't, acts like she wants her to follow him. And uh, which she does, follow her, which she does, she goes out there and shows her her baby grave. And the whole time that she is walking out there showing to where this baby is buried, she's trying to talk. Arr, 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 arr. And of course, they're talking back to her like they know exactly what she's saying. But it's like she's telling them that this dog, that her puppy has died and it's been buried. Okay, that was part of the uh, story there. Within about the next two or three days, they had another puppy to die, and it began to smell. So the lady crawls back up on there as far as she can go. And sure enough, uh, Reba has pushed another puppy out to the side, and it's died. It's laying next to the uh, other puppies in there that are moving around and uh, this type of stuff. So anyway, she uh, comes back out because Reba gets ticked off whenever you get close to her puppies, as, as I said, as any mama dog usually does. But anyway, she comes back out of the house, and of course, Reba comes out running around, playing and uh, barking and doing the arr, 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 like she's trying to tell her that this other puppy has died. All right, the lady tells Reba now, well, you've got another puppy that's died, and we're going to have to bury it. So if you would, rather than us trying to get up under there to get the dog out, why don't you just bring the dog out so we can bury it like we buried your other puppy? And she's arr, 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 trying to talk the whole time. Uh, trying to bark, trying to, well, she can bark, but I mean, anyway, she's not barking. She's just sort of, ar, 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 like a dog does sometimes, whatever you call that. But anyway, come on, log truck, I'm sure. No, it was a piece of trash truck. But anyway, Reba goes back up under the house the second time and brings this dog out and lays it at the edge of the yard down there next to where the uh, other graves are. So they go back down there, they dig another hole, Reba comes checks the grave out before they put the puppy in it. They get the dog ready and bury it. And uh, that was just a very interesting story about how dogs are so close to us. And uh, getting back to the other story that I was telling you a while ago about the man that didn't want the dog buried in the cemetery. They are pretty close to us. They have to be because we were all made by the same creator according to uh, Indian legend. And I don't want to get on religion or Indian beliefs and that type of stuff, and I don't want to get on religion or anything like that, but it's just a very interesting story about a dog, how they have feelings, how they have emotions. I believe they have a soul, and uh, if you have ever looked into a dog's eyes that you love and that loves you, you can pretty much see their soul. I'm sure they can see ours. But anyway, that was just a little story about a dog that I wanted to share with you on this Alabama adventure. Well, okay, boys and girls, we made it on back to the shack before dark. It was one more hot day out there today, and I know you could tell that from that bright sunshine. I really enjoyed it, though, getting out in it. But about time it started coming in this afternoon, it clouded up real fast, got real dark, come up a good thunderstorm there for a while, and we got a lot of rain. It was so hot, I just stood out in it a little while and I took it in. That's why when I came in, I had to change shirts. My other old camouflage ragged shirt got good and wet, and uh, it was uh, sticking right to me, so I decided I'd better take it off. So I would look halfway decent on the video tonight. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, story about that dog. It uh, was very uh, unusual that the dog 
seemed to know what they were talking about, and I believe it actually did. Uh, a lot of times uh, I have been talking to people about Bigfoot, and that's what I tell them, that uh, Bigfoot is extremely psychic. And I've had a lot of people look at me like I was crazy, because I have a lot of people do that anyway. But I do believe Bigfoot is extremely psychic because of his habitat and where he lives and how he has to survive. It's that same way with dogs. They uh, uh, live a kind of pretty much of a different life than what we do. Although you may have one like Chico that I keep in the house with me a lot, they still, I believe, are psychic to a very high degree. I uh, just wanted to uh, pass that along to you. One other thing that I want you to keep in mind and remember is every Saturday afternoon on WRLA out of uh, West Point, Georgia, there's a paranormal talk show with a good friend of mine. His name Paul Clapp, and he comes on Saturday afternoon from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock Central Time. Now, that's Alabama time, and the show airs from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock Eastern Time. That's Georgia time. So, anyway, uh, you might want to check into that. He always has some nice uh, guests on there with some very interesting topics, and uh, they uh, cover a lot of topics on that particular show, so I'm sure you'll want to listen to it. You might also want to Google it and check it to see if it's online. I'm not sure if it is or not, but the next time I talk to Paul, I'll ask him and find out. Anyway, also later on this year, on October the 24th, now that's Halloween weekend, not 24th, October the 28th, now that'll be Halloween weekend, uh, he will be having a paranormal mini conference in Valley, Alabama at the community center. I'll be one of the speakers down there and uh, would certainly like for all of you to come by where I could meet you and uh, we could talk things over. Uh, whenever we get through, I always like to have a question and answer time. And uh, if you have anything you'd like to ask me or follow up on some of the stories, that's always fine. He has some other guests coming as well who will probably do a whole lot better job than what I do on the paranormal. But anyway, uh, just keep that in mind that you might want to come down there. It'll be from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock that Saturday. Anyway, he'll, I'm sure he'll be advertising it on his uh, radio show pretty soon. But anyway, I just thought I'd go on and uh, get that little ad in there for us because uh, we want to have a big crowd down there that afternoon. Uh, I guess, as I always do, I need to close this out and say hello to my granddaughter Madison, wherever she may be. If uh, you like this video, uh, I hope you give us a like, and if you like what we're doing down here, I certainly hope you subscribe to the channel. Oh, uh, let's see, there was something else I was supposed to say, and uh, I'm just going blank. But this has been one of those busy days. If you would like to make a donation to the Alabama Bigfoot Society, that would be very much appreciated if you're in a position to where you can. All you have to do is to go on our website, alabamabigfootsociety.com, and there on the front page you'll find a place to where you can make that donation. And I would like to thank all the people who make donations and have made donations in the past. Anyway, I guess with all that being said, that I'll be looking for you next time on the next Alabama adventure, and Chico and I will see you on down the road.